wow. It wasn't so much a bolt out of the blue as a bolt out of the maroon on Tuesday when it was revealed that Jigginstown House, the, the dominant racing operation in Ireland, will soon enough be no more. The revelation that Michael O'Leary is to eventually cease his involvement in National Hunt Racing is a news of seismic proportions and particularly for the sport in Ireland. Could any of us have seen it coming? Well, no, we couldn't. That's why this is such a major story. This, of course, has been a season again in which Jiggin Stanhouse Stud, owned by Michael O'Leary, run by his brother Eddie, have had a fantastic campaign. Tiger Roll winning back-to-back -back Grand Nationals, the first horse in Red Rum to do so. So many stars on the track this season and in previous seasons since the operation really began to get going in the early noughties. Michael's explanation for his decision that he wants to spend more time with his family is one generally used by politicians when they resign. On this occasion, it's a far different sort of story, but one that will have an even bigger impact on his surroundings. And those surroundings are primarily the sport in Ireland. Sales companies will be affected by it. Breeders will be affected by it. Vendors will be affected by it. The point-to-point -point fraternity will be badly affected by it. And principally, those six trainers who last season sent out 225 individual horses for Michael O'Leary, they will be badly affected by it. And of course, principally, Gordon Elliott, who has had such a, a stratospheric rise to prominence. His brilliance has been supported by Michael O'Leary's investment and it's taken Gordon to near the top of his profession in Ireland with just Willie Mullins one peg above him. And Willie Mullins, well of course he a few years ago uh, parted company with Michael O'Leary. That now looks to have been a, a major beneficial uh, move for Willie when, Willie, when Michael O'Leary uh, pulled out a stable. It was because apparently the, the stable fees had become too expensive at Clisutton. Well, since then, Willie Mullins has played a very sensible game in spreading his ownership net across the yard so he's not so dependent on any one owner. That, sadly now, is a problem that faces Gordon Elliott. Jockeys too, jockeys like Jack Kennedy, Davy Russell have all had so many big race winning rides for Jiggins House Stud they'll be affected too. Is there any positive spin on this story? Well, in the long term, perhaps there is, in the sense that one criticism of Jigginstown's involvement in Irish racing has been the extent to which they can dominate some races. It's often said that if you're a trainer without Jigginstown patronage, you can really struggle. Perhaps in four or five years' time, when those maroon colours, larger maroon colours, have disappeared off the track, the sport will open up more, and people that, for now, feel they can't compete with Jigginstown and J.P. McManus might well want to get involved in the sport. That's trying to see this as a glass half full situation as opposed to a glass half empty situation. But the reality is that in the here and now, the sport in Ireland in particular will be rocked by this news and sympathy goes to all those who are going to be most badly affected by it in the here and now over these four or five seasons when Jigginstown stop buying store horses, don't reinvest in the product and eventually disappear from horse racing. It's often been said that Michael O'Leary, when he wants to dispense with someone's services and sack them, tells them they should go for a cup of tea. Well, on this occasion, Michael O'Leary has said to racing, let's go for a cup of tea. He has, in a sense, sacked the sport and the sport will miss him. He was a major, major player, but in a few seasons' time, those Jigginstown House colours will disappear from racecourses.